Hi everyone, Wade Curtis here, founder of Curtis Property Group. Thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in. I've got a really interesting uh, topic and a presentation today, and it's called rent vesting. Now, the terminology rent vesting, what does that mean? You may have heard of it, it's been around for a little while now, but people are sometimes wondering whether you're better off to buy your own home to live in, or are you better off to rent where you wanna live and purchase investment properties? and they call that rent vesting. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's logical. Now, I've done a couple of different scenarios. These are just projections, so don't hold me at ransom with the numbers or anything like that, but I just um, spoke to someone um, on the East Coast in, 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 in New South Wales the other day, and uh, the numbers are quite fresh in my head. I wanted to do this scenario um, for them just to see um, what they were looking to do, just to see whether it, it sort of made sense or, or real financial sense. So um, bear with me. Now, I've done some scribble on the board. Um, hopefully you can make sense of it when I'm talking you through, but apologies for the, for the mess. I just sort of scribbled it up uh, this afternoon. Now, scenario one, buy your own home, rent where you want to live, or invest. Now, typically, if you're going to rent, the money, if it's financially viable, the money that you're actually saving, you should be looking to invest that money to build your financial future, okay? Otherwise, it's a pointless exercise, isn't it? So, let's go through the buyer strategy first. Now, as you're probably aware, Sydney and Melbourne have been through a boom the last last three to four years, and property prices are, are really sky high in that market, starting to really slow down now. Um, but, um, you know, this particular person was in, in, in New South Wales, and they're looking to purchase a property of, of $850,000, okay? Had $130,000 in, in cash savings, all right? So, buy their own home there. So, 10% deposit, so they're borrowing 90% of the property's value. So, what that leaves us with is a loan of seven sixty-five. yeah? I've done a couple of different calculations here on principal and interest repayments using a 5% interest rate, which you can get a lot cheaper than that now, but I just wanted to, to make it more realistic. And then on an even uh, higher scale of 7%. And what it would actually cost to be able to service this loan on both of, both of those things. Now, so basically on a 5%, on a 765 loan, you're looking at $49,000 in principal and interest repayments, okay? On a 7%, you're looking at $61,000, yeah? Now, rates and insurances, et cetera, with a property you've got running costs, land rates, water rates, insurance, all that sort of stuff. So let's just say that there's $6,000 for this property. Estimate, but let's just say it's six grand. So 49 plus the six leaves us around $55,000 in cost. That's what that property is going to cost each year from your net income, meaning that you've already paid tax, this is your clear money. Remember there's no tax deductions or tax incentives on your principal place of residence, okay? So it comes out of your net income. So quite a lot of money and the majority of that is interest, not principal. So you're paying a lot of principal. Banks front load the interest portion, so you're paying very little principal at the start and a massive amount of interest, and as you pay the debt down, obviously your interest gets smaller and your principal component grows and you're paying more off the property, okay? So that's that scenario. Now let's assume that this person was gonna rent the exact same house as they were gonna buy, all right? So the rent, $650 per week, $34,000 per year to rent the same property that they were gonna buy, okay? So $34,000 on a 5% interest rate, so using a 5% interest rate, they're actually financially better off by $21,000 a year by renting the property as opposed to actually purchasing it to live in or buy, okay? If that interest rate went to 7%, it would actually be $34,000 better off per year to, 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 to rent it as opposed to buying. That's a truckload of money, a truckload of money, okay? So now, if we're doing this option, which in this case, it sounds like it's pretty financially uh, beneficial, 
we need to invest because there's no point just saving that money. We need to invest that money to be able to build your financial future. So let's assume that we're renting it um, and we're gonna buy an investment property. So we had $140,000 or $130,000 in cash, which we needed majority. That you might be left over with 10 grand or something after the purchase of this property as a buffer. But let's say on this one, we only need 70,000 because it's a cheaper property. We're going in with a 10% cash deposit plus cost, stamp duty, loan mortgage insurance, all that sort of stuff, okay? So we need 70, but that leaves a loan amount of $450,000, okay? 5%, so we're comparing apples with apples here, is 28,000 on a principal interest repayment on $450,000, okay, per year. Now the rent for the property on 500, let's say it's $480 per week in rent. So giving us around $25,000 per annum in rental income. Now we call these expenses and they're the running costs of your property, your land rates, your water rates, your insurances, your landlord protection, your rental management fees, those types of running costs, okay? Let's say they're $5,000 per year. All right, our tax deductions for this property. Interest is $23,000 per year. Remember, this is a principal and interest repayment of 28. So on an investment property, the principal component is not a tax deduction, okay? So when we're calculating our taxes, that's why we're just going on the interest component, not the principal and interest component. Our, our expenses, which were running costs, is $5,000 a year. Now depreciation on a brand new property, we get plant and equipment, and we get the structure of the building. So land appreciates, buildings depreciate. So uh, on a standard, you know, average four bedroom, two bathroom, brand new home, we're looking at around, you know, eight to $10,000 in depreciation cost per year, okay? Let's use that as an example. So total is $38,000 per year in tax deductions, okay? So then we've got our rent coming in, so we're going up to here now. Our rent, I hope you're following me. Our rent is $25,000 a year, yep, 25 grand. The 38,000 is our tax deductions that we're entitled to. The 25 is the rent, so we subtract the rent, the income away from the, the tax deductions, and it leaves a shortfall of $13,000 per year, okay? So that's effectively our loss, but we are paying $5,000 in principal off the loan, so that's an equivalent to putting $5,000 in the bank, putting it in your pocket, okay? You're reducing the loan, you can then leverage that out to be able to borrow, to be able to expand and grow your portfolio a lot faster, okay? So, so let's say that this property, 13,000, um, this person is on $100,000 a year in income, so paying around $27,000, $28,000 a year in tax, so around 39% uh, cents of the dollar tax, okay? So the $13,000 loss times that by 39% is $5,070. So we take the $5,070 off the 13, leaves a shortfall of eight grand. Let's call it the best part of 8,000. So that property has cost $8,000 per year to actually hold it, but you're actually paying, as I said, $5,000 a year off the actual principal component. Now. What that means is $8,000, we're saving 21 on the 5% option, so as an equivalent. So we're using really a third of the saving for one investment property, okay? And paying it off over 30 years. So you own it outright, no debt in 30 years time. Now let's say that we're gonna use double, so we're using the same money, but we're gonna use 70 for the first property, and now we're gonna use $70,000 for the second property. So we're gonna buy two properties, and we're gonna do this all over again. So let's say two properties have cost us by paying principal and interest, paying it off over the term, over 30 years, um, of, of, of $8,000, so that's only $16,000. So we're still only really two thirds of the way through our saving. So we're still a mile in front, we've been able to have two investment properties, paying them off, so paying principal and interest repayments, Let's say they're worth $500,000 today. In 20 years or 30 years time, let's say they're worth $1.5 million each. So then you would have $3 million worth of net asset, no debt, and the rental income coming in each week 
and each year at $25,000 a year now, in 30 years time, it's not gonna be 25 because rents always increase. So let's say it's 40 or $50,000 a year in rent each property. Therefore, you know, you're on 70 or $100,000 in passive income. And that's assuming that you do not buy any more properties. So you've got the capacity to use the equity growth in those properties as they grow and the debt gets decreased. You can borrow against them to be able to expand and buy more asset. So instead of having $3 million net asset, you might be able to have four or $5 million in net asset and three or four streams of rental income, passive income, giving you a happy retirement. So financially, it makes sense, okay? But emotionally, it might not make sense. And that's the difference between um, you know, investing for the numbers to make your money or being emotionally connected to say that I need my own home, I want my base, I want to put pictures on the wall, all those. So everyone's circumstances and reasons behind it are different, but financially, this was a better option to rent where we wanted to live and actually invest for your financial future. I hope that makes total sense. Um, as I said, they're not um, exact numbers, so don't hold me at ransom, but I just wanted to get that out there. Hopefully it was some good education for you. It's a big debate. A lot of people talk about it, so I just wanted to do my own numbers and give you my perspective on it. Thanks guys, have a great day, and look forward to seeing you next time.